the last kind of little boilerplate thing I need for my to get the back to get the back end for my web API service going. So now we'll do the cool thing. We're going to go in here and we're going to add a controller. And the controller is basically this part here that gets incoming HTTP requests and figures out what to do with them and then sends something back, be it a web page or some JSON or whatever. So I'm going to add a new controller here. This is the add controller dialog box that comes up. I'm going to call this guy personnel controller. And you'll see there's a drop down here. You have various types of templates for controllers. Again, don't get too bent out of shape about these options if you pick the wrong one. All this is changing is a few little structure um, scaffolding methods and where your controller inherits them. If you make the mistake or you want to change it later, you change a few lines of code, you're fine. So we're going to do an empty API controller start though. So that's what we have. You'll notice for those of you who are doing MVC, I'm actually inheriting from API controller instead of controller. That's going to give me those base class or those uh, base class methods I need to handle my routing. So the first things I'm going to do, because I always forget these and I have to go back and do them, is I'm going to declare my repository or my model. to do is I forget to, for AutoMap you actually have to call that configuration method. I usually forget that too, so I'm going to make sure to do that now. Okay. So we're all set up. We can start writing our REST uh, API. So the first thing I'm going to want to do is I want to get a list of all the people. So I'm going to make a public method that returns an I enumerable. Of person. Make sure I get the right one. Yes. Called get people. And we're just going to add that return, get all personnel from our repository. The next one I'm going to write, I want to get back a specific person. So I'm going to write get person, get person. I'm going to take an integer for my ID. And that's And that's just going to return from the personnel model whatever comes from get person. Okay. So now if I run this. You want to make that ID? ID. The one. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, ID. <coughs> I was complaining Sorry. about something compiling too. Oh, no, it's fine. Okay. Thanks. Oh, that's the other thing I almost forgot. You can't actually start a library in transit. So there we go. Okay. So I'll start this guy up. Now, there, when you create a web API project, it's going to have a basic uh, control, home controller in there that's going to turn back this little getting started page. You can take that out if you, when, you're, when you're ready to go. I usually leave it in for the demos. Um, but what I'm going to do here now is, to test this, I'm going to, in my browser, type API person. So what I'm doing here, you have to preface it by default with API. That's going to tell the runtime, hey, you're calling us on a controller. You can futz with the MVC routes if you want to get rid of that. The problem you run into is that sometimes it will get confused. For those of you who are doing MVC, you probably know what I'm talking about. When you start, it builds this routing engine of all these unique routes. And sometimes if you try to take that out, it's going to conflict with another route and it's going to call the wrong part of the runtime. So I usually just leave it in. If I, my clients get really that bent out of shape about it, what we do is we set it up as a different website without the API and I just do a redirect, which works fine. Uh, most clients, once they see what that's going to cost and my hourly rate, say, no, we'll, we'll just leave the API and it's fine. And that's kind of becoming a standard, too, for people who are publishing REST-based APIs on the internet anyway. So, and then we call person. Person is the name of our controller. So if we just call that, enter that, Oh, 
Oh, personnel. I spell. I called it person when I was rehearsing. There we go. Turns out we need to spell it right. And we got back our Fred Flintstone, our guy we seated it with. So if we go back and do, actually, I'm gonna put this in Chrome because I think it's a bit easier. No Microsoft people here, right? Okay. <laughs> API. So yeah, we can see we get him back. If we do one, we get XML. Now it's interesting that we're getting this back as XML here. If I go to Fiddler and I fire this up, what I'm going to get back is a 411. Why? Oh, because I'm doing it post. That's why. I'm going to get back JSON. I can look at the raw data here, I can see I get JSON back. If I look at the composer here, I can see in my header, I'm not really specifying the format. So what WebAPI is going to do is it's going to return back JSON by default. Now, Google in its uh, in the Chrome browser puts in every request header, hey, I want to get back uh, some sort of XML derivative if you have it, because that's really what HTML is. It's just the form of XML. If I really want to get XML back, what I can do is in my header, I can do content type. Oops. Spell it. And I basically tell it XML. If I put that in my header, the Web API writing engine is going to be smart enough to send me back XML. So I don't have to do all these goofy attributes and stack up my routes and stack up my methods. It's just done. And all this was done with just two methods. So the question is probably being asked now is how did it know where to go? I mean, I don't have any route templates in here. I don't have any of that stuff. So again, Web API is kind of embracing that idea of convention over configuration. The URI I went to was the site WAC API WAC personnel. And you know those personnel controllers in our controller. You know, remember I tried to go to people before. That's because when I rehearsed this earlier, I did people controller. It's going to find whatever controller maps to that name. So generally speaking, you're going to want to name your controller based on what they're looking for. And that's going to be based on some kind of entity. People, account information, whatever you're sending back. You're going to want to kind of keep it to one entity per controller as well. That's going to make it easier. That's kind of based on how all the mapping is going to work. And then you'll also notice here, both of my methods started with get. That brings in another convention. It's going to look for a method that matches the incoming URI whether it has nothing after it or it has a value after it and it's going to look for a method that starts with that verb. I could have just called these both get and it wouldn't have cared as long as it's get whatever I get foo it doesn't care. It's going to map the verb which is the front of the method name to whatever you're expecting to get in. So that's all you have to do. We'll do a post here real quick so you guys can see how easy that is. So if you have two uh, methods that both start with get mm -hmm. and have the same signature. Yeah. Well, you can't do that because, well, what's probably going to happen in that case, if they have the exact same signature and they both start with get, it's going to probably call the first one. To be honest, I haven't tried that, or I haven't had that come up, so I don't know what exactly it's going to do. But it will be a conflict, right? It will be a conflict. It, I think it'll just call, it, it'll, it'll end, I think it'll end up just calling the first one it finds in the text in the right. file. Actually, I have had that come up because you can basically create query strings by adding a bunch of variables to it. And that is one issue I've had is that you can't just get back a bag of the query string values. I mean, you can, but it's really hard to parse through. You end up having to create all these method overrides with the various query string. Um, combination is the right word because it will realize if you swap the orders, but all the various name combinations you're going to have. First name, first name, last name, first name, last name, street, first name, last name, street, city. Um, so that kind of becomes difficult. But what hap what's happened there is we've had conflicts. It's just the first one, if you can't figure it out, I'll just find the first one that fits closest. Um, and sometimes that is ends up being get all people. It's like, I can't figure out what you're doing. None of these things match. I'm going to throw them all out. I'm just going to give you back a list of all the people. 
So that kind of gets a little difficult sometimes too. Does that kind of answer your question? Sure. So what you're saying is you'll use the verb and then a descriptor that describes the signature of a method. Essentially, yeah. For for the name ones, yeah. Anything after ID. ID in MVC is is a um, they have what are called default mappings. And what's going to happen is anything that's a number after that URI is going to map to a, an argument called ID. And that was because the first, in MVC, when MVC1 came out, the first thing everybody had to do was go into the global ASAX file and add a route for when I have an ID at the end. And they said, well, everybody's doing that, let's just build it. Um, so and there's a couple other ones, so I think ID is one that most people use. But once you start getting into those named pairs, that will, yeah, it'll be based on being in the script. Cool? So uh, we're going to do our post here for the person. And all I'm going to do here, I've really filed off most of the work to the repository. It's just going to, we're going to send the person, it's going to save it, and it's going to spit back on me. So if we run this guy again, now I can't test my posts in a uh, web browser because I don't really have that level of access. So this is another thing I really like Fiddler for, is I can come in here now, I'll take my little argument off the end here, and I can change my action to post. And what we'll do is, see the person, I already have Wilma created here as a JSON object. I'll copy her in here, and we'll change this application type to JSON. And, we got 200 back, which is good. And our data coming back was 2. So if we go over here now, and I'll do this again in Chrome since we already have fired up. If I put in, just get back a list of all people. So now we've got 2. They went ahead and saved her in. I can get her specifically. And we're done. I can also, I've also actually done Barney as, I believe, XML. So we can put him in there too. Now one thing you'll have to do in your XML when you send it is you got to make sure you have this namespace information in here. Um, it's kind of a drag, but in WCF the way we get around that is we just declare an empty namespace. We really don't have that option with Web API. So we have to tell it this is a namespace so we can figure out how to deserialize it. So I'll go this extra line in there, 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 and run it. And we get Back, he's person number three. We go back over here. Oops. Yeah. And yeah, we have all three. So that'll work with all the verbs. Put, delete. Um, you can. I could write them if you guys want to see them, or we could drink sooner. It's kind of up to you guys. So didn't you have unknown as the department? What did you have as the department? Is Barney's department? Yeah. What did I have? Okay. I might not have had anything listed for him. Yep, uh, unknown. Uh, no. unknown. I might not have that actually. I might have taken that out of the code. It might be misspelled, or I might have taken oh, that. I might have taken it out of the object. Well, my got boss. Yeah, well, my got boss. Well, are you married? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I might. I might have misspelled it. That's probably what it was. My spelling is atrocious. Oh yeah, he's oh, yeah, he's, he's listed as a nil. Right, but it gets a nil. I nil equals true. Not that I know what that means, but it's true. I think I think what happens is I think it's translating that J, the Jason uh, is translating that into a null, unknown null. Okay. Well, might would be my guess. We could I I've, I've never actually noticed that before. We could change that. Let's do something. Else. Let's try something here. Let's experiment. Let's do post. We'll do. Just put an er at the end, an unknowner. Or take it out. <laughs> Here we go. An owner. Uh, call him Barney2. Once again. Full. So, saved him. Let's see what happens over here. That's interesting. He's a yep. too. The difference here is that we're using XML. Yeah, I wonder what the deal is with that. 
Uh, I'll take a look at that. I'll, I'll take a look at that and uh, put something up that uh, figure out what's going on. That's interesting. I've never noticed that. Could it be positional because the part that's toward the bottom for Barney. Oh, yeah. Could be. Let's try. It shouldn't matter, but we The namespaces for um, XML can have. Uh, you can either put them in any order or a very specific order. Shouldn't matter. Let's go to try it. Oh, it must be the order. Huh? Yeah, yeah. Huh. I never noticed it before. <laughs> yeah, it's. I didn't say that, but. Okay, well, that's interesting. I'll have to, I'll have to look into that. Anyway, uh, any other questions or observations? Or? I have a question. Yeah. Uh, where did the automatic come in play when mapping the domain to the so, main object to the view model object? I didn't see that. So where that came into play is uh, uh, what do I call it? So I'll uh, get person. Here's an example. What I'm doing here is I'm getting it from the repository. At that point, it's strictly a different, it's technically a different type of person, and I'm calling automap here. I'm just saying, hey, uh, you're getting a core. Wrap it to the web uh, model version and send it back. It's uh, AutoMapper is a great tool. You guys have access to this demo, obviously. It's free, so uh, and it's open source. So if it doesn't work exactly the way you like it, you can change it. So it's pretty slick, though. Okay, is there anything else? Questions or stuff you guys want to take a look at or? Take that as a no, we want to drink. Okay. Uh, this web API only works when you're doing MVC as part of the uh, MVC it, web app. Yeah, it's built on the MVC runtime. Now, having okay. said that, you can use it in the web uh, WCF. You you can. So this is where the lines get a little blurry. Strictly speaking, and uh, in MVC and even in web form applications, you can add WCF services. Right. It'll show up as an SVC file. So right. you can't, it has to be a web, or it has to be an MVC project, because it brings those things in. But you can add web forms and WCF services to an MVC project. Um, I've had people do that before. And sometimes it's a good idea, sometimes it isn't. But that option's there. As I mentioned before, and I'm going to talk about this in a minute,